You're listening to the Behind the Ears podcast because everybody does Disney differently. The Behind the Ears podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. Hey everybody, it's Mr. Chris, and I gotta tell you about Expedition Roasters. Listen, I'm a, I'm a pretty big coffee drinker, just like a lot of you are, but these people have got coffee right. Their coffees are made from selectively sourced premium and specialty grade Arabica beans. They provide the absolute best flavor and aroma, and select roasts even come directly from a single estate farm for a truly perfect cup that is never bitter. They've got awesome Disney-inspired flavors, such as Roundhouse Roast, Route 66, Skipper's Brew, Dark Side Roast, Redhead Rum, and one of my favorites, Bob Slitter's Brew. Listen, if you want to have the taste of Disney in every cup, give them a try today. ExpeditionRoasters.com and Behind the Ears podcast listeners gets an extra 20% off your first order by using the coupon code EARS20. That's right, E A R S 20. And you can find them over at ExpeditionRoasters.com. Brew your happy place. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, KingdomStrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while, while at Walt Disney World, and those things are not cheap. But getting something from KingdomStrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, They'll be able to drop it off and pick it up right from your Disney Resort at no extra charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact KingdomStrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's KingdomStrollers.com. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Ears Podcast. I am Uncle Danny, the man that's a little tinted yellow tonight. We can't figure out what's going on, but that is Mr. Chris, sir. How are you? I can't explain why I I, I look sunny. That's what it is. I look <laughs> sunny today, and I'm not really sure why, for those of you watching. I'm fine. It's the camera. That was making me. It's the camera that's adding twenty pounds. It's the camera that's making me look weird, you know. So, hey, what can I say? I'm having a great day. How are you? How are you starting off your week? You know, not bad. You know, I was listening to a new intro roll you did, and I want to bring up a point that, uh, you know, you wouldn't go through so many strollers if you weren't trying to jump in them all the time, and you know, have your kids push you around. Those are usually meant for the younger generation. You know, you're absolutely right. But at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I've got kids. You know, every once in a while, dad, Put needs, to a, work. dad needs a break. You know, it's, it's one of those cases. Um, but in all in all honesty, I really have destroyed my fair share of strollers. I know that I've told that story a few times, and um, I won't bore everybody with it. But, yeah, I... I um, it, it it really got to the point where I, I kind of needed to carry a can of WD forty with me just to keep the squeaks going or squeaks out I should say it's really uh it's really uh it's really pretty nuts man. So before we jump in the show, I think we have a little news. We do, we do. All right, so here's <laughs> what. what? Just... No, you're like, oh, I'm so surprised. I'm caught off guard. I only found out about this ten seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not really. Um, <laughs> sorry, we got the giggles tonight, and it's, it's going to be a fun show. All right, so here's the deal, everybody. Um, tonight, I wanted to basically make the formal announcement that you are going to want to hold the date. Save the date. I'm not sending out cards, but save the date. May 19th, Saturday, is going to be our second annual charity marathon show to benefit give kids the world village down in orlando where we are going to basically quite literally talk all day talk disney all day and we're going to start at 11 o'clock a.m eastern time and right now danny i've got enough people lined up to be a part of our show to last us probably anywhere between 10 and 12 hours 10 and 12 hours of disney conversation let me say that again 10 to 12 hours of us talking and so 
is going to be really cool, and it's going to be a lot of really great personalities, some who have uh, been on our marathon show before, some who have already been on our show several times that are joining us again. It is going to be really super awesome and all for a great cause. Um, I've actually had some communications with Give Kids World. They're going to be setting up our... um, basically our fundraising page for us. And basically what that means is you're going to be able to give directly to give kids the world without worry that, you know, we don't have any intake of the money or anything like that. Nothing about the giving. It's all taken care of by give kids the world. They will take care of everything. They will send you information back for tax, you know, tax purposes and the whole shot. It is going to be so, so cool. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of really interesting things because we are still in the midst of planning it. We've we actually still have, um, we're still have we still have a few um, responses pending from some people. We can really at this point cut, possibly go 12 plus hours, Danny, of just having that's us talk. A, you know, that's a lot of expedition roasters. That's a lot of coffee. That's a lot of expedition roasters. In fact. Expedition Roasters is going to be is going to be on the show with us. They're going to talk a little bit about their stuff and talk some Disney with us. That's going to be really cool. I guarantee you that I'm going to probably have to bring my Keurig up here, and we'll have to we'll have to see uh, how many cups of coffee can Chris drink before he finally sounds like Teddy Ruxpin on a car battery. And oh, and also don't forget, we also have that's right the um, the big glass. Of uh, that's tea, glass. That's a, that's a fish bowl. It's a fish bowl. It's a fish bowl that's going to be filled with green tea, and I will be drinking that the entire time. Um, not to mention, um, there might be a chance that some Casey's corn dog nuggets are going to come my way, and uh, we'll have to see what else is going to be going on. So um, the nice part is, is that you're going to be able to catch us on Facebook Live, just like you catch, catch us now. So no matter where you're at, you can watch us on your on your smart device. You can watch us at home. And some people last year even had us on their big TVs. I mean, because, hey, nothing says awesome than spending the day with us, watching us all day long. Now, I'm going to tell you also right now, we've got some we've got some cool giveaways going on. Um, yeah, some of our some of our guests um, may also be either a providing us stuff to give away or to auction off um, or to do like some kind of a some kind of a. Um, a random drawing to a winner. Uh, some people are going to sell some of their products with all their proceeds going towards Give Kids the World as well. Basically, if 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 one of our guests um, basically offers us something, all the proceeds are going to go right back to Give Kids the World Village. It's going to be really super cool. Um, we're going to be publishing the uh, the actual roster. As soon as we finalize the actual timeline, um, basically, I've given I've given uh, those who I rec- who received invites this week, give them in a few days to try to figure out what their schedules like and everything else uh, before we announce everybody who's going to be on there. Um, it's going to be really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. Last last year was a whole heck of a lot of fun, and uh, this year I think it's going to be even better. I am going to basically tell everybody that there are going to be some things that we're going to give away through audience participation. There will be some things that are going to require um, basically a verified donation to give kids the world in order to be entered into a drawing. We're going to work on some of the details for that, but we do have some, some pretty good stuff uh, just, you know, just because you're here with us. We really, we really have a heart for this particular charity and I actually have uh, a friend of mine who has um, basically uh, he's been able to benefit from Give Kids the World and be able to have an awesome vacation with his family um, because of it. And in talking with him, I can honestly say it really put the cherry on top in the sense of I have no qualms standing behind this organization. Um, so May 19th, 11 a.m. Eastern time till... I'm going to say who knows when we'll let you know, but it'll probably be at least a 10, possibly 12 hour show, possibly even longer. We may actually go into Sunday where Danny and I will just basically switch from coffee to beer afterwards. But, but who knows? It should be really, really cool. So we'll let you know more about it as soon as we, as soon as we finalize all of our details. I like it. I like it a lot. I do too. It's going to be cool. So let's get into what, you know, I feel like a majority of the people are coming to listen about. Yeah. And before I get into it, 
we don't ever do this, so I'm going to go out and we're going to do something fun right here. I don't ever bash anybody in the comment section. If you see any links, because literally I've now deleted four in the past five minutes while Chris was talking about um, click here to watch a movie. You all know it's spam. These people, they're bots. They're just some company that's just pouring it out there that saw the you know the movie title in the description of the show and they're gonna spam it please do not click on any of that nonsense you know we don't ever put links into our comment section unless we are unless you see it from me or chris or one of the admins don't click on it just stay out of it no matter what with that being said let's dive in to infinity wars adventures and I will go ahead and start by saying there were people that saying there's no way that you can talk about Infinity War without doing spoilers. <laughs> Watch us. Um, first off, Danny, this is actually this is kind of actually a new thing for us because for once you and I actually saw, um, you know, one of the one of the hot movies on premiere weekend. Not just we saw it within 12 hours of each other. You saw it Saturday night. I saw it Sunday morning. And you know, you sent me a comment. Uh, I will not repeat the comment, <laughs> but you sent me a comment that I read that I'm going like, oh man, I've never heard Danny describe a movie in this manner because because Danny and I tend to have very different tastes of of movies. Um, he's not a big Star Wars fan. I'm I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. Uh, we both love Toy Story movies. We both love Cars movies. We love we love a lot of the Disney animation. Um, in fact, if, if you recall not too long ago, you know, we did the whole, um, you know, our countdowns of our favorite movies and we actually didn't quite overlap. Okay. We didn't overlap at all. It was just one of those things. (laughs) Um, but let me, you mind if I start off a little bit here? No, please go right ahead. Okay. So here's the deal. Uh, I saw the movie first showing Sunday morning. Um, I live about 20, 25 minutes away from our typical theater. And it was one of those cases where I looked at my wife and I said, well, the movie starts at 945. We usually get there about a half an hour early. It gives us time to get popcorn, soda, find our seats and be done with it. I looked at her. And I said, you know what? Let's get there by nine. And she looked at me and she's like, 45 minutes before movie starts, I go, trust me, we need to do this. And so we get to the theater. It's nine o'clock. There's like four cars, but there's several of them following us in. (laughs) And so as soon as, and I tell you, we were there probably three minutes. So it's like maybe just hitting nine o'clock and there's already one person kind of, you know, peering in the door going, are you there? I smell popcorn. <laughs> are you <laughs> there for me? I'm here. And so there are a whole bunch of us got out. We were like 15th in line. Well, the cool part is, is that I'm going to give a unsolicited plug to AMC theaters. You know, I'm an AMC Stubbs, uh, Stubbs person, premier member. And so I already had my ticket on my phone. So I bought it like Friday night and I, you know, for my tickets on, um, for my showing on Sunday. And so I kind of just walked right up, scanned, um, I gave Kathy my phone. So, cause I had a $5 reward from Stubbs. I said, popcorn, soda, you know, what we want. nine something in the morning. Oh, you've got to, man. It doesn't oh. matter. It does not matter. It was, it was, it was, and not just, not just any old popcorn. We're talking about, you know, the, the, um, semi truck version and the, and the liter of cola. Oh no, it was more than, it was like, it's like, if you have small, medium, large, extra large, oh my gosh. And whoa, we had a whoa. <laughs> and um this is the kind of um the kind of cup where seriously why do you drink something like this in a the movie theater because you know after you drink it all you're gonna have to pee <laughs> you're really bad i might add anyway so sure enough i go and i take the, i take my son's jacket my wife's jacket i go to the theater now i have my spot in the theater it is like the back section of the theater first row against the railing in the center. That is my spot. Cause I, that it, I have figured out that at least at this theater, that's the best seats. You know, those are the best seats. And sure enough, there were somebody just a few seats, few seats down from my seats. I'm like, good. Those are mine. Nobody sit there. These are my seats. So I tossed it. I tossed the, the, the jackets down, walk around. <laughs> 
my seats. And I then promptly waited for my wife and son to come back with an empty wallet and full popcorn buckets. <laughs> yeah, I kid you not. So um, now this is after, of course, my wife um, got the her popcorn slathered with butter flavored 5W30. And my wife uh, not only does that, but she also had a little Tupperware with her that she proceeded to fill that with additional butter flavored topping. Because after you eat the top of the popcorn, you have to rebutter the bottom half of the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had an angioplasty scheduled for Monday afternoon because I needed it. Yeah. So uh. we're there and basically it was kind of funny because right before the right before the preview started, you know, we did one last bathroom break, filled up the popcorn one more time, got more whoa soda, which was by the way, dietary coke. And um Proceeded to watch the previews, and I don't know about you, but we had about twenty minutes of previews. I don't know, you know, it's it's like, but but by then the theater was already about eighty percent full. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like, cool, go through all the previews, and there's seem to be a lot of really good previews. The funniest one, I still, I still now want to see Deadpool two in the theaters <laughs> just because it looks so funny. But I don't know if I want to spend that kind of. I don't want to spend that kind of money to watch that movie in the theaters. I just, my wife will not go see it. She does. It's such a good movie. I can't wait. I I know. It's just one of those things. Okay. Previews. So here's the deal. Um, I I am going to say this. I I am. I'm going to, if nothing else, I'm going to give a little bit of an advisory. This is not a spoiler, but here's the deal. Over the past several years, I think the Marvel movies have been, more and more, I won't say violent, but there's a lot of fighting in these movies, okay? So, the thing of it is, is that there was a guy that was sitting a couple of seats down from me, and I got into a conversation with him. Of course you did. Of course I did. I talked to everybody. <laughs> Everybody's my friend. And... <laughs> What do you mean? Of course I did. Yeah, of course. And you so, talk to, literally, you will talk to a wall if it can blink back at you. Well, if it blinks back, it means it signs, <laughs> shows signs of intelligence, dude. Anyway, so he's like, I'm here by myself, and I've never had, I've never seen a movie by myself. I'm usually, I would usually watch movies with my daughter, and she's ten years old. But I've heard that the movie is relatively violent, so I wanted to watch the movie beforehand. I said, you know, that's not a bad idea. Now, uh, you know, the last movie I remember seeing, you know, Marvel wise outside. Well, I saw black Panther just a couple weeks ago, but the last like Avengers type movie was captain America civil war. And let's face it, that there were some really good fight scenes in that movie, really good fight scenes. But the thing is, is that it was, it was kind of violent. Now, I I think everybody has to judge their level of violence acceptance in movies to each their own. I I, I certainly don't judge. Don't judge me. But the movie was pretty. What had a lot of real strong fight scenes. Not Deadpool version worth of fight scenes, which was a lot of blood and gore. Didn't see a lot of that. But it's not. It's PG thirteen, and I would probably say that would be your minimum. It's thirteen for this particular movie. That's just my two cents on just, you know, target audience, 13 and above. Um, there were a lot of kids, a lot of little, little kids, littler kids, smaller kids. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't, here's the funny thing is I didn't hear like a whole bunch of whining, crying or anything else like that. But just per, personally, my two cents PG 13 for a reason. So I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll pause there. Let you, uh, let you start off your endeavor. <laughs> oh boy he's chuckling he doesn't even said one word yet he's already laughing so i had plans to go see this movie either this weekend or next weekend i'm out to dinner with my girlfriend and we're like oh what do you want to do and, you know night was getting old you know later and chris had texted me and goes hey for tuesday's show you should really go see infinity wars i was like well green light this one <laughs> <laughs> well i'm so glad i could be a disney influencer <laughs> so we go in, we sit in the movie, and we literally just picked out like a little while before that. So we didn't get, we didn't gather or, you know, head in getting any popcorn or anything like that. So we're sitting in the movie, and we got to the movie kind of late. 
and we sat down so we were in closer to the front and this is a really old theater with the old seats it doesn't have like the nice comfy seats mm. so literally i'm like this oh, and i'm like i don't even care because i've been hyped for this movie for two years ready to go and we're sitting there you know we saw about 27 minutes of previews oh my it gosh. was the longest <laughs> no exaggeration i looked at my watch and i was like Man, they don't stop. Man, you got to watch uh, a whole like a whole episode of like Roseanne or something like that, you know, before you have your cheese. It was a sitcom before. Um, so we watched the movie and the, the uh, excuse me, the previews. And right before the movie starts, I turn to my girlfriend. I'm like, okay, for the next out 156 minutes, you do not exist. I was like, there will be no talking. It is going to be me yelling. At this at the screen if things don't go right. Um Are you a yeller? Are you a screen yeller? At times. I, I try to keep my mouth shut. I'm like, oh come on! <laughs> what do you mean? I, I don't do that, but I do a lot of this. <laughs> you know, just mouth I I, I jaw just drop my hands up. You've gotta be kidding me. Oh, so you're that guy. You're that guy that sits in the <laughs> yeah, front row like, front row. The front, I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, the front row, like, you ever watch Mr. Shine Theater 3000? It's like, you know, you see, you know, you see everybody <laughs> talking and stuff right in front of me. That's what I picture being going to a movie with you is like. Um I thought the movie was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, you know, I'm more definitely uh lean towards the audience score compared to uh, the rotten tomato score. Yeah. So anybody who's in really heavy into movies, um, I don't live or die by Rotten Tomato, no. but I will always use them as a resource. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes they nail it on the head, and sometimes they're completely wrong. Uh, the audience score from Rotten Tomatoes was 92% liked it. The average rating was a 4.6 out of 5. And to show you, they they got 32,000 people to rate that movie. So 32,000 is a lot of people to say, hey, this was basically a near-perfect movie. Um, the tomato ometer is a little bit less. Uh, the average rating was a seven and a half out of 10. I don't understand. Uh, and that was out of 285 people. But I mean, 239 people liked it. Only 46%, 46 people said they did not like it. Um, I think it, what it, it ended up grossing over the weekend, US was just north of $258 million, which is really putting marvel on the map with just clobbering its competition great acquisition by disney um you know fantastic i even said the chris before the show started i said so when do they hit two billion dollars <laughs> and some people might be two billion it, i mean it's worldwide right now i had the statistic up right here as of monday so as of yesterday after the global market um closed uh, this movie had generated seven hundred and twenty-five million dollars. Wow! And they're saying by week's end, easily over eight hundred. And they said within twelve days, on anything under one billion dollars would be a wrong calculation. So they're saying within the first two weeks of this movie being released, you're talking about a billion dollars. Now, okay, so let's do a little bit of a comparison here for a minute. When Black Panther came out, there were a lot of people that fell in love with that movie just because, you know, the storyline was really good. Wakanda was really a pretty awesome concept. And I and I heard a lot of people. That is a really cool concept. It is really a cool concept. I mean, I I really, I really enjoyed Black Panther. I cannot wait till it comes out on Blu-ray because that will go into my collection. Guaranteed. Um, But the reason why I bring that up is because I think Black Panther was like one of the first Marvel movies um, that I consistently heard people say, I'm going to see that movie again for the second or even third time. I haven't heard that since, you know, The Last Jedi. And even I saw The Last Jedi twice in the theaters. So, you know, we, we even had people in the comment section say stuff like I just saw it for the second time. I just saw it for the third time. I, um, I, I keep hearing people saying, I'm going to go see it again in the theater. I really enjoyed it. And there were also people that saying, Hey, I already saw it twice. And I think I got more out of it the second time. You okay. know, this, I think this movie has some pretty good watchability. I mean, you know, from a repeat standard, um, even my wife and I are contemplating going, seeing it again, um, this weekend. And, um, 
you know, that's that's a pretty big deal because we're also we're going to probably go to our favorite theater, which is about an hour away where it's a Dolby cinema. And it's all, you know, probably the the only cinema in the area, in my opinion, that beats out the Gus Man Omniplex for sound and picture and overall awesomeness and theater experiences. Um, it definitely has some rewatchability. Um, but, Danielle, let me ask you something, though. And this, again, we're keeping the spoiler free. So I am, I, I do have some things I, I want to compare notes between you and me. Um, I know you're an Iron Man fan. Oh, yeah. And are, have you basically kept up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the sense of all the different Avengers movies, all the different individual movies, etc.? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So my my question to you is this, and this is a question that kind of had a little bit of debate. The question is, do you think you need to see or have some general understanding of the other Marvel movies. I'm not going to let you finish the sentence. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. You cannot walk into this movie blind. I mean, you could. You know what? Let me rephrase that. I think you need to see the Avengers movies. The okay. subplots outside of them, you'll miss subtle things like some of the remarks from, you know, Iron Man to Captain America. Um, the Hulk. You really should watch them, even though I don't think they're good movies. I think there's a lot of subtle conversation pieces that would go over somebody's head without. No, no, no. Let me phrase that. You don't need to see the Hulk movies. Just watch the Avengers and they'll explain everything. There. I, I was going to say, I mean, I remember seeing the Hulk movies and I hate to say it as much as I loved the Incredible Hulk growing up as a kid. Yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 not really that big of a deal. I'm let's put it this way: I'm glad I saw Black Panther before before watching this. I'm glad I saw Thor Ragnarok before I saw this. Um, I mean, and I've kept up with all the all the different movies. I mean, my wife is a huge Captain America fan. I mean, huge Captain America fan. So He's obviously, we jump, huh? He's a chump. I better not Captain let my wife hear you. Says she will fly out to Jersey and open a can of whoop tushy <laughs> on you. But, um, but yeah, I. Oh no! I, but I mean, my girlfriend turned to me and goes, "Who's that Spider Man?" <laughs> I was like, "Ah, you have not." It's seen not Toby Maguire from circa <laughs> you know 19, or two thousand and four. Um, you know, the thing of it is, is that <clears throat> I will agree. I do believe that you need to have some understanding of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe in order to to really enjoy it because they do not explain the any backstory. It's almost no. like this, you know how in a lot of cases I would say, "Hey, yeah, this movie can probably be seen as a standalone movie without a lot of problems." Yeah, no, this is not either. a movie that you want to see as a standalone movie. This is a movie that there's a lot of other movies that build up their characters and this is a great understanding. If, if like if you I don't think it's a spoiler to say that Wakanda plays a part in this because Black Panther is in it. So the fact of the matter is, is that if you've never seen Black Panther, you don't understand any part of those characters or the land of Wakanda or this, that, and the other. And you'll, you won't understand the depth of it. And so I do believe that you need to go at least have an understanding. And so here's the deal. First off, before I even say that, now it makes sense where a lot of theaters, like I know AMC did this, that they had a marathon leading up to Infinity War where they showed every MCU movie starting with Iron Man. And they showed them all in a row according to order of release. You know, it was like 36 hours straight of pure Marvel movies. I really wanted to do that. I did. I want to jump in real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, re- to go back to the, your original question, I thought of something, and Bailey was the one who made me start thinking about it. Yeah. I've never seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I've known them from the parks, Groot, right. and all that. Right. What's the what's what is he really called? Like the flying raccoon? What is what is the raccoon? It, it, um, that, uh, that's Rocket. Rock, yeah. See, my buddy turned my buddy on the phone. My buddy he goes, Yeah, it's Rocket. He got my like, really, it's the best name they could come up with. Then he told me the whole backstory on it. I was like, Oh, okay. So I had never seen 
any of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So I can recognize Groot from the park, but I'm like, why is Groot so big? I thought Groot was small. And then I, <laughs> I mean, I later read into why that happened, and I'm not going to spoil that for anybody who hasn't seen Guardians of the Galaxy. So I was like, oh, okay. So Guardians of the Galaxy, you don't need it. But once again, I don't think, you, besides, if you just, the heart of the Avengers, you need to watch the Avengers movies 110%. Outside of that, I think you'll just miss some subtleties, um, you know, with some conversation pieces. But I would say definitely the Avengers movies are the ones that you need to watch for, to understand everything. Now, my next point. After the movie, I turned to my girlfriend and I said, Chadwick Boseman. We all know who, if you don't know who Chadwick is, he's literally the main actor of Black Panther. Could that dude have stepped in poop any easy? I mean, this man is rolling in it. He do, he stars in Black Panther, which is a box office hit, which becomes the number one Marvel rated movie all time as of when it came out for box office. <laughs> up until jumped, that, up until this past it, weekend, <laughs> jumped up to number two of the highest gross Disney film in modern era, right behind. Uh, was it one of the Jedi movies? The yeah. more recent one, too. I was surprised. And then, well, his movie is still making money. Comes out with Avengers. And I mean, this dude, granted, I like I know when uh Robert Downey Jr. signed for Iron Man, he signed I it was an eight movie contract. I don't know what they're making now compared to what their contracts are, but man, that dude. Dude killed it. <laughs> he you know, killed it. Killed you know, until, it. but until back you, to your. I was gonna say until you said that, you you make a you actually make a really a really a really valid point because not only did he crush it in Black Panther, but it was almost. I mean, and it's kind of funny because I just saw that movie, so it was really fresh in my mind. So it's like, wow, um, yeah. I'll, I'll go from making one one of making that movie all the way into making some, you know, another one that's, that's a very heavy hitter. And, you know, he plays a pretty significant role in it. Um, you know, the, the thing is, is that, yes, I, I will say that, you know, there's, there's so many characters, there's so many little characters too, that all of a sudden my son, I heard my son say something next to me. I'm like, what? And he mentioned a particular character that I didn't recognize right off the bat. And he's like, oh, yeah, that movie is from this or that that character is from this movie. And it may have only been a 35 second shot. But, you know, it was one of those it was one of those uh, it was one of those cases. Um, yeah. I like, I, you know, <laughs> I like what Jimmy Horn mentioned. He goes, how bad did Terrence Howard screw up? He was roading in the first Iron Man. And then, of course, he was replaced with John che Don Cheadle. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, the funny part is, I don't know who he, uh, you know, what happened or what that kind of decision was made, but uh, Don is happy. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really I mean, cool. Look at some of these. I mean, look at Robert Downey Jr. I mean, his career was literally not in the toilet. It was flushed and halfway to, you know, the sewer plant. Yeah. Before, you know, literally Iron Man resurrected him. And he cleaned up his act, obviously, uh, which is, you know, I by no stretch of imagination do I want to say that that had nothing to do with it. Um, goes to show you that. No, never mind. No, no. I was going to say, think, think of it this way. If you really want to go back into the Wayback Machine, you got to go back to, I think it was like 1984. And then I think it was the uh, I think it was the year, but the movie I know for a fact was Rodney Dangerfield in the movie Back to School, and Robert okay. Downey Jr. Jr. was in that movie, and it was absolutely hilarious. You look at that movie, and then you look at one him today, and you're like, totally different person. That's that's what thirty years of movie making does to you. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Um, now some of the yeah. big movies coming out for uh, the you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yep. Um, Looking forward to a lot of them. Um, is there, you know, is there anything you're looking forward to coming out off the bat? Oh, okay. So, speaking of which, I, th I thought it was kind of funny. You know, there was only you, you're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy, and there's <laughs> there's only one. I know, I know the timeline's not really there, but the fact of the matter is, it's like, and I know it's not exactly in the same cinematic universe so to speak deadpool wasn't in the movie but i am looking forward to seeing deadpool 2 which is of course still a marvel movie 
Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I can't remember the actual off the top of my head. I don't know the actual lineup. I think I'm more looking forward to some of the Pixar movies that are coming out, like the Incredibles two. I am so there on opening night. I don't care what happens. Let me see. Coming up, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, that is actually coming out July 5th. And I saw, and I saw the trailer for that. Looks bad. Bad isn't good or just doesn't look good doesn't look good i mean but i'm not an ant-man fan you gotta remember like you know how you guys are all in the star wars and all your stuff i grew up on comic books yeah so i never respected it <laughs> you know like you know like even captain america i'm not a captain america fan i never was as a kid um so i never you know i don't know let's see we I have do, ant-man do, and the wasp on, I uh, it's actually let me confirm this july 6th uh, we have Captain Marvel coming out March eighth of two thousand nineteen, and that's going to be another, and, and that's going to be another one of those movies where I know nothing about the character, so I'm going to have to have all about character development in that one for me. Uh, the fourth Avengers movie, um, once again, is two thousand nineteen. Uh, the sequel to Spider Man Homecoming is slated for July of two thousand nineteen, and then lastly, coming in two thousand twenty, we're looking at Galax Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. You know, here's. <laughs> I think Chris Pratt is a fabulous actor. I and I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. And Zoe Saldana is awesome as Gamora. Um, you know, I really, I I enjoy watching all of them. And of course, Vin Diesel is the voice of Groot. It's just pretty funny. I I will I will tell you this. I am going to say this. This is a line out of out of Infinity War. It's not a spoiler, but it was really really funny. When Groot said something and Thor responded to him and um, Rocket looks at <laughs> Thor and goes, you speak Groot? He goes, of course. It was an elective in college or something like that. I'm like, yes. oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> that had that had the whole place just rolling. Um, so I just think that I thought I thought that was actually really pretty, pretty so funny. You know, the list of uh, Pixar movies is actually really hidden. Um, you know, there's a I mean, they're, they're, they usually try to do two a year is what I, you know, what I know I had read a while back. You know, I mean, if you go back, let's see, I have it listed right here. 2015, we saw Inside Out and The Good Dinosaur. Uh, then for some reason in 2016, they only pumped pumped out Finding Dory. Uh, you know, currently last well last year, I shouldn't say currently, we saw Cars three, and then honestly, Pixar blew it out of the water with Coco. Uh, yeah. two thousand eighteen, all we have slated is Incredibles two, which is right around the corner. Yeah, that's actually a lot closer than a lot closer, but at the same time, Dude, Disney, away. but Disney as a whole, away. you also have Solo coming up. You know, granted, yeah. we're, granted, we're not talking about the same movie universes. I totally get it, but the fact of the matter is, is that you still have, you still have Disney, in general, releasing a number of movies in 2018. You know, going beyond again, Solo, Incredibles two. Um, you said what was what was being released on the sixth? I'm sorry, I was I was not paying not not that I was paying attention. I just can't remember. Well, Incredibles two is coming out in June, and then Toy Story four is slated for also June of but two thousand nineteen. Right. So Tom I mean, it, I mean so, so there's gonna be a lot of a lot of really awesome movies. Now, I will I will say this. I I will say that eventually people are going to spoil infinity war for people i'm going to basically say people need to go see it because eventually it will be spoiled for you and when you do it's going to change how you see the movie itself um the movie is funny it's also exciting it's bite your nails it's edge of the seat it's omg it's wth it's you know emotional it is intense and it will want it'll, it'll make you want more it'll make you want more you're going to look back and you're going to say that is the quickest two hours and 15 minutes of your life 
Yeah, so 156 minutes, something like that. Yeah, not including that was... not including the not including the previews yeah, well, and everything else. Like I guess that. some of us have longer previews than others. All right, let me ask you something. Yeah, Pixar related because I know we're kind of jumping around here. Sure. Can you name me the two Pixar movies? There was a bunch at 98, a bunch at 99. Can you name me the two Pixar movies that by Rotten Tomatoes were rated 100% and the cinematic score had an A or above? There's only been two ever created. And you're saying it's in the late 90s? I'm just saying it's a Pixar movie. Oh gosh, man, you're you're really testing my trivia tonight. I wasn't really I wasn't really uh, prepared for this, but I'll, I, I'll I wouldn't have guessed these two either. I'll play. I would have guessed one of them, but I wouldn't have guessed the second one. Um, I'll play. I'm going to say no, not that one. I'm gonna okay. Three seconds answer. Three seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say Toy Story being one of them. Okay. And I'm going to say Finding I want to say Finding Nemo, but I think it's too late. I think Finding Nemo is early 2000s off the top of my the top, top Let's of see. My thing. Finding Nemo was a close one. It got a 99% with a 90 over 100 metric views and it was rated as an A+. But you are incorrect, sir. The number one movie is Toy Story at 100% with a 95 over 100 in metric with a cinematic score of an A. Well, I got that one right. You got that one right. The second one was rated at 100% with a metric score of an 88 over 100 with a cinematic score of an A plus Toy Story 2. Wow. Now, I see the thing. I would not have guessed Toy Story 2. I. I don't know how you give Toy Story to that, but well, I, right. I think it's kind of funny because it's like you know I'm thinking it's pre 2000 because you know when you had 2000 you have then then you have things like you know Up, Toy Story three, uh, Cars was 2006, um, you know Let's then I think you have Finding Cars Nemo. only had a 74 on Rotten Tomatoes. See, I don't understand. That is, that is by far one of my favorite movies. I mean, between that and like The Incredibles. So okay. Um, what do you think was the lowest rated Rotten Tomato? I'll tell you this. Cinematic score gave it an A-, and the metric score, and that's done by people like me and you, it was a 57 over 100. Pixar movie? It's a Pixar movie. Oh. Um... Come on. This one you should know. We've all agreed it's a terrible movie. Oh, it never I, 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 just want, I wanted to make sure I was getting my timing right. It had to be Cars 2. Yes, it was. <laughs> I mean, the fact you know that, what the sad part is, Cars Three only got a sixty-eight see, with a metric score of fifty-nine over a hundred. I found I th- I thought Cars Three was a superb movie. I mean, it it was a really super good movie. I loved it. I loved the, I loved the uh, the the plot. I loved the storyline. I loved the, um, you know, life lesson in it, and so on and so forth. Cars Two, unfortunately, I think it was too much of a. There was too much political commentary in Cars Two. And as much as I love Mater, too much Mater. Yes, you yeah. can have too much Mater. And so, <laughs> but yeah, I, but you know, those are, I mean, it's kind of interesting. I, mean, I still like those movies, but Cars 2, I probably would, I don't really sit back and, and watch. Do I have it in my collection? Yes, I have it in my collection. Um, but yeah, you know, someone just mentioned planes, put Dana to, sorry, Diana to sleep. And um, the funny part about it is that the first movie, Planes, was not all that good. The second Planes movie, Planes, Fire and Rescue, was an excellent movie. It really I was. never saw them. This is the thing. The Planes movie kind of like came and went really, really quietly. And, it, it's, and the funny part about it is that <clears throat> it, was, it was kind of to fill in the gap from the older generation because it came from the world of cars. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the first movie was not so good. Surprised they made the second one. It was a whole lot better. Really enjoyed yeah. it. You know, 
So I know you wanted to touch on one piece of news before we wrap up because we have a few minutes here. And did we have <clears throat> any phone calls today that worked or no? Oh, we actually did. So allow me to make sure that we get one of our callers actually list, you know, actually brought in and wanted to basically make this comment. Hey, guys from the Behind the Ears podcast. This is Kevin Stacey calling to let you know how I thought of Infinity War. So good that I'm going to see it at least once or twice more in the theaters. And it was very enjoyable and well worth the money. Have a good day. Bye-bye. I agree with that. I agree. I mean, it, was just, it was an enjoyable an enjoyable movie. And um, I really do think that it was it was pretty solid. And I definitely want I definitely want to see it again. Now, if my time doesn't if my time doesn't necessarily work out with that, because the next several weekends are obviously really busy for me. I can't really go see a movie during the week. Um, it is definitely going to end up in my Blu-ray collection because um, I just I just think it was an excellent, excellent movie. I will say this. Um do regulate your soda and popcorn consumption during the movie. So you do not need a bio break somewhere in the middle. Um, but yeah, I, again, I, I, I will, I will stress. I think it's a movie that's, you know, your youngest children, if they're really, if they get scared easily, may not necessarily want to be a part of it. Um, I don't think it was that scary. I don't think so either. But as I said, you know, some, some kids don't like a lot of fighting violence in the set and the other, there was a good amount of that. That's the only thing that I would probably, I would probably advise. It is PG 13. I would definitely say PG 13. The 13 is, is there for a reason. That's just my point of view. By all means, do whatever you want, <laughs> but, but that's just my two cents. Your mileage may vary. Taxes that included void were prohibited by law, but yeah, we do um, have one piece of news. Um, one piece of news, and this is just a, this is kind of just a minor detail. I know you and I go back and forth about different pieces of transportation at Walt Disney World, and um, our friend Ryan over at TMR Studios actually posted basically uh, an article basically saying that um, base, the minivans are now going to be across all resort hotels, and which is a little bit different than what I read that, you know, it was at almost all the resort hotels, and they have now expanded to all resort hotels, everything from deluxe to DVC, moderates, as well as values. Price still stays at about 25 bucks a ride. And, you know, there were still some conversations going on about, whether or not it's better than Uber or a Lyft on its own. Hey, sometimes you just kind of still have to make those decisions depending on how large your party is, whether or not you need car seats, this, that, and the other. You kind of have to, you know, do your own comparisons. If it was just my wife and myself, hey, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get myself an Uber. If it's going to be about my whole family of five, I'll probably get a minivan um because i'll probably end up needing to get a needing to get a bigger uber anyway which is going to probably cost me a little bit more so i think that was a, a pretty good thing it was inevitable it was inevitable that disney was going to do that and um i think it's um uh, something people need to take into consideration for their next trip so there you have it right. and thanks to ryan for uh posting it up on his page and sharing it with sharing it with it yeah let me try that again sharing with us over at the wdw community page really appreciate that yeah, we do. All right, Mr. Chris, take us away. All righty. Oh, real quick. Well, I'm glad I didn't press that yes. button. What? Always, always, always. She thought I was crazy when we did this. What? I know it's so long, but Bailey hit on the head. Please, when it's a Marvel movie, stay till the end. And I mean the end. You will go through about 15 minutes of credits. credits. Look at them. I always get excited when I see the Disney stuff up there. And then, you know what? You start watching these movies enough, you start to notice some names. You're like, hey, it's Johnny. <laughs> I didn't know he was in this movie. Um, Stay till the end. You always want to see the end peak. I was not a fan of this one, but the mm -hmm. last Avengers movie had a very good uh, little clip you kind of you kind of have to watch and you know this is the speaking of which i will go ahead and make this comment this is the first time at any movie that had any sort of end credit uh scene that like virtually the entire theater stayed to watch it to the very end when, yeah. when we saw when we saw black panther nobody 
stayed until the end but us. And, wow, you know, of course, the people that are there to sweep up the popcorn, you know, they're kind of looking at us like, you know, if you guys leave, we can clean this theater now. And I'm like, uh-uh. I paid for the entire movie. I'm watching <laughs> the entire movie. And besides, I never met it. besides the score, I, I will tell you this. I love the score to the Avengers. I will tell you. By the way, before we, before we go, before I press that magic button to actually start our ending, for those of you watching, I know we talked about Star Wars, and Whitney kind of made a little bit of an allude to this last Thursday, but we are going to have the director and, and musical composer of the soundtrack for Star Wars Scoundrels and here on Thursday, because that particular fan film is going to be released on Friday, and we're going to talk to the people that made it. And I know it seems like, wait a second, it's a fan film? Yeah, just just you wait. Just you wait. We, I'm going to be posting some stuff between tomorrow and Thursday for you to get a little bit hyped and find out a little bit more about it. It is really, really cool. And I, I actually got a link to the soundtrack for the, for the movie itself, and I was just completely blown away. Wow. You're not going to want to miss Thursday's show. Even if you're not really a Star Wars fan, this is going to be interesting because, it, again, it's a topic that we've never done before. And I don't know if um, I don't know if anybody's ever really talked to people that spend a lot of blood, sweat and tears to create a really well produced fan film. And I, I really can't wait to hear more about it. So you want to be here with us on Thursday. And here we go. <laughs> heard the show and we hope you want more well feel free to join us over at our social media platforms instagram and our facebook page can be found at behind the ears podcast our web page is behind the ears and our email is behind the ears podcast at gmail.com and our twitter handle is at behind the ears pc and come and join the conversation about all things disney over at the wdw community page don't forget to rate and review the show over at iTunes or Apple Podcasts as it really helps us get the word out about the show. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or the Podbean app. Also, you can listen to us on Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and via Alexa and Google Home. Once again, everybody, thank you for joining us here live on Behind the Ears Podcast. Don't forget, share this out with your friends, spread the word, rate and review, do all the jazz that was with the cool little jingle. With that being said, I am Uncle Danny. Tuck your kids in tight, wear your seatbelts, drink that cranberry juice. I bid you all adieu. And by all means, this is Mr. Chris. Thank you very much for joining us. And also, before I forget, happy birthday, Hollywood Studios. That's right. Danny's favorite park celebrates one more year and it's 29. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. We really super duper appreciate it. We love you and we can't wait to talk to you again really soon. Take care. <laughs>